Hey y'all, today I am making gumbo. This is my first gumbo for this fall season. And I use a gumbo roux. I do not, I have, I can, but I do not make the roux from scratch. And I'm gonna show you the ones I use. One I use is the carries. I just recently discovered that last year when I couldn't find my favorite. My favorite, Mama Papa. I used to get this one from my mom. You want to get the one that does not have the rice in it. And so what this is, is it's a rule with all the other flavorings that you use. And you can follow the recipe to letter. This is the Mom Papa's and this is the Karis. I stumbled upon this last year when I couldn't find this one. This one sells for $1.99 in some places for $2.99. I got this at Walmart for $2.39 in some places $2.99. So I use that. I got, can y'all see? Y'all can't see. I got green onion. I got bell pepper. Two regular onions. I got garlic. To jumpstart mine, I like whole chickens that have already been um, rotisserie. I like the rotisserie chickens at Sam's. They didn't have them, so I got these from Kroger. I got a little flour. What I do is I'm going to take this flour and put it in my cast iron skillet and just put it in the oven. As opposed to using all that grease, because see, you get the grease from the sausage. So I don't want to add extra grease. I'm going to go ahead and um, brown my flour in the oven at the end of it and try to get the thickness that I prefer, that I desire. I also have, I very seldom use celery, but I need celery. You need celery for this. Here I have my, um, and they're not even all they thought out. I have my Dungeness crabs. And what I do is, at, I, I, I pull it apart. <laughs> the flavor is just awesome. Um, I have um, my shrimp here. I took them out yesterday. These were $11.98. It's, it's 26 30 in here. It's 16 to 20 in here as well. So I got extra large and jumbo shrimp. I got my manda sausages, my favorite pork sausages here. I like them in everything. And then I even have it. Somebody say, I, that's a first. I ain't never seen little smokers and gumbo. Let me tell you something. I grew up in an era where we had more than a generation before us, right? But. I was, I was also that person that would take my great aunt to the store and I would watch her and I call her gumbo or poor man. You know how they say poor man stuff or whatever? Y'all, she would make her gumbo out of the ends. You know how you go to the deli and get different types of meat? She would get her gumbo and make it out the ends of those deli meats. I remember going with her to get it. I'm going, y'all. But anyway, so here's what I'm going to use. I'm going to cut these vegetables up. I'm going to uh, get this thing started. And I'm going to come back and show y'all how I'm going to do it. All right? Okay. All right, y'all. We're at the big pot. So I want to show y'all what I do. Usually, if I have fresh chickens, I put them in the water. These are cooked. I'm just, just what? Going to put them in the water. What I want to do, I want to get all the flavoring off of them. See y'all letting the bottom of that pan? I want all of it. There's nothing but flavor. All it is is the dripping off the chicken. And so what I do to even get all of that off. Now if you boil your own chicken, remember, or bake your chicken because you can bake it, you're going to have all that broth off of there as well. I don't like the skin. If you eat gumbo from my house, you won't have to remove any skin or any bones. I debone my chicken and I take the skin off. I, usually, I, if, if I have to, if I don't have rotisserie chicken or whatever, how I do mine, I take my whole, I take a whole chicken and then I take chicken breast. But what I want to do is I want to bring this back up to, to, to temperature. I don't want to just get real, real hot. But, or you could debone it and then just take the carcass and stuff and put that in the water. But I said, you know what, this time, I'm going to just go ahead. And the reason why you're doing it, I'm trying to get all that flavor. That's Y'all, that's a lot of flavor. You know that? That's a lot of flavor. I want it all. <laughs> I love my food. And I, I don't mean salty, but I mean, because see, like this, this is seasoning. I don't want the skin. So in order for me to get the seasoning off of the skin, I'm going to have to boil it off, right? 
Yeah, but I don't want the skin. I don't want the skin in my dish. That's two chickens down up in there. Now, you can make it according to what the recipe says. I never have. I use it because I wanted the roux from it, but I didn't necessarily need the recipe on how to make gumbo because I know how. The roux just uh, expedite the cooking process. You, you understand what I'm saying? Now, we have done it before too where we use chicken um, leg quarters because we got them one time 29 cents a pound. Chicken leg quarters are good, but the thing I don't like about the chicken pieces break up to to just about nothing, like mush almost. You know, because you have to cook it a long time. And so I just prefer whole chickens, and then I do chicken breasts. If I if I if I need feel like I needed some more chicken, I keep chicken breasts here. I have even had some frozen thighs. I just take them out and bake them or something and add them to it. But anyway. And what I've cut up here so far is the bell pepper and the green onion. I'm going to go ahead and add it. Just because I don't want that butter to burn, I need... I don't know if everybody... I can only speak for my southern heritage. That's how we start every dish. That's how we start every dish. I'm telling you, if try a dish that you haven't ever done this to, take that same dish and go ahead and add you uh, the sauteed vegetables and a little butter. Some people use olive oil. I used to not even do mine in butter. I used to just put a little water in there. Because I didn't want the extra grease with it. Butter just does a little something to it for me. So that's why I started doing the butter. I don't use the celery all the time. That's the only thing I don't like. I told y'all before, if you watch my cooking videos, I don't cook celery with celery a lot. I don't like my rice dishes with celery. And you don't want to skip the vegetables in your gumbo because to me, that's what amp up the flavor. Now, if you look at the uh, look at the recipes that I had, the, the uh, root mixes that I had, they don't say nothing about using the vegetables because they have the dehydrated vegetables in there already. But I like to add my own. This is not something I saw somebody else do. It's just something I did because I knew I wanted more flavor than what I could capture out of that packet. I use, I like a lot of celery in my gumbo. A lot. Now here is where I I have to have my celery, okay? And as it cooks, some of the chunks may be big, but as it cooks, trust me, they're gonna just they're not gonna stay here like that. They're gonna break up considerably. What do I always do? Also, you always want to season in layers, put a little salt, not a lot, just a hit, a hint, a hit. And just think of it as it's bringing its own little variety into the dish. Now we need to cut up our onions. And for my gumbo, I don't use minced garlic. I like fresh garlic in my gumbo. Garlic is one of the things that accentuates the flavor in gumbo. And so are the bay leaves. Bay leaves uh, are a must in gumbo. If you don't have bay leaves for your gumbo, you may as well not even make it. What are bay leaves? I'll show you in just a minute. Everybody probably know what they are. And you know, sometimes when you're cooking, you may not even capture them all. You may give somebody a plate and they got a leaf sitting up in the plate. <laughs> but uh, all you do, all that person knows to do is just don't eat it. But I'm talking about a whole lot of flavor, especially in your beans, in your soups. What are they doing? Another good thing for your... Um, it's time. Not T I M E. Well, T I M E too, but T H Y M E the seasonings. That's the, if you got a gumbo and something missing, just take you a little bit of that. Add it to there and baby. Woo! The flavors and flavors. 
Okay. Now, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm going to need some more onion up in this. What y'all think? Y'all think? Whoops. What y'all think? I need, I need a little bit more onion. I got one I had. I had used half of it. And I put the other half in a little uh, storage bag in the refrigerator. I'm going to go ahead and use it. I'm telling you, you don't want to skip the seasoning. And a lot, and I know the recipe say you don't need it, and you really, I mean, if you don't, you don't have to have it. You really don't. It's just something I do. I have to. Restaurants, and you want some Louisiana gumbo, and people talking about you ain't no gumbo if you don't fix the root yourself. Y'all keep thinking that you go to the restaurants. You think them people to set up, to sit up hours at a time fixing root, baby? They use one in the pack. I'm telling y'all. Like I said, it's not that we can't, but why when you don't have to? I even had a lady to tell me, she said, I love my fat. That's a labor love. All right, y'all. So, family. another thing I forgot to show y'all. Another thing amps up the gumbo flavor. If you're doing seafood, you can tolerate this shrimp. This is dry shrimp. Some places you can't get it. So, if you live in a place and you can't find dry shrimp, let me know. But I, if you want to try this, let me know. But I'm telling y'all, this amps up the flavor. So what I do, I take these and rinse them out and put them in a little water and just put them in the microwave for a couple of minutes. And let that flavor <laughs> just cook out. Get all the flavor up out of that. And as it cooks, it swells. So it don't stay dried up like that, of course. You tell my amps it up. I like it in my okra dishes. Anything I fix it, I put shrimp in. I like to use dry shrimp and a fresh. It just gives it an awesome flavor. This step because I don't want you to quit. Miss it. Make sure you put garlic. That garlic is going to accentuate your flavor. It's going to take it up a notch. It's going to bring all those other flavors together. Um, if you have fresh parsley, I would recommend it for this dish. If I had it, I would use it, but I don't have any. I meant to get some when I went shopping, but I didn't. All right, we're going to let this simmer, and I'll come back. All right, y'all, here are my dry shrimp. I take them and rinse them all. This is what they look like. And as they cook, of course, they get plump. So I have two packages. I think I'm just going to only use one. I got quite a bit of large shrimp. I just like these for the flavor. So I'm rinsing them out. I'm not going to boil them today. I'm going to boil them the gumbo. I'm just going to add them to this. I do add them to this though. And just cook them like this. And I cook it like this too when I make my okra. Stewed uh, okra. Like that as well. Again, it's the same process when you do everything. You season your... Uh, Use your seasonings and your meat. Well, that's how I do it. Some people say they pour it straight in there, but to me, it it, it gives it a slow cook, all day long simmer flavor, if that makes sense. All right, y'all, I'm not going to come back now until I put together, the, when I debone the chicken and get ready right, to mix it all so in one pot, I'll be back. I want y'all to see this chicken now. It's it's The water hasn't really started boiling. When you buy chicken like this, you probably want to take it and put it in the oven for a little bit just because sometimes that chicken is not cooked thoroughly. Thor thor th thor told y'all some of them words but this used to be gap thoroughly. Sometimes a chicken is not cooked thoroughly. It, it has a temperature where it says it's done I guess to them but it's not as tender as, it, as, as baked chicken can be honestly. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm um, deboning the chicken. I just wanted to show y'all. I take all the fat. Every piece of fat I can feel or see out. I don't um, see all that seasoning. All that little, those little specks like it may be pepper that's seasoning. So what I'm doing here, once I pull the meat off, I put the fat in a bag to, to get rid of it. 
I put the meat over here to the side in this bowl that I have here. Y'all can't see it, I don't think. But anyway, so when I get through with this, the the, bar, the broth that's left in here, that's what I put the, um, I, I'm going to show y'all, but that's the, the broth that I have in here. That's where I put the, um, uh, the roux in. And then, see all that seasoning that's on that skin? That's why it was more than that, but that's why I wanted to boil some of it off. I don't cook my gumbo with the skin or the bones. I debone it. Everybody don't do that. Some people like the, um, some people like to put like wings and stuff. I just don't like the fat. So I pull all that off. And what I was saying is I don't shred my chicken because it's going to shred some as it cooks. And I want to keep it as whole as possible. I don't want my chicken to be like mush in there. You know, like if, if you had whole pieces, the whole pieces stay whole. But when you do it this way, you want to make sure that you have big pieces and you haven't broken your chicken up until everything is just like shredded. You know what I'm saying? So I pull all the fat and everything off, but I still wanted some nice sized pieces. All right, y'all, this is time, kind of time consuming. And I'm backwards and forth washing my hands. But so far, this is what I've gotten. And I have it in a bowl here. I'll be back. Okay, y'all, so my battery about to go dead, darn. So all I'm gonna do now. All right, so, so I bon the bone of the chicken and this is what's left. This is the broth, I added a little water to it. You may see some little fragments of fat, but that's gonna be the max of what you're gonna have to, that's gonna cook down, it's gonna run it down to nothing. So I'm gonna add the seasoning packet. See, I'm not gonna be able to stay on here because Um, this is my two seasoning packets. See that carrot is a lot darker. And I'm going to mix this with my um, whisk. You got dehydrated vegetables, uh, brown flour, and all that in here. Okay, so you add this. Turning my fire back on. I had turned the fire off because I wanted to turn that down some. This is my meat. This is the two chickens. And see how big that's the breast. Um, and we're gonna come over, we're gonna bring this over to our pot. And I'm gonna drop it down real low, 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 and add it into the pot. And that's plenty of chicken. Chickens is enough. Okay, then we're gonna add that. Add that. I'm probably gonna have to add some more broth. All right, that's my chicken. Can y'all see it? All right, we're gonna let this come to a boil once we get everything in there. All right, and then I'm gonna add my sausage. Hold on, y'all. This is what my sausage and vegetables look like. It's been cooking, it's been sauteing. This is what that looks like. And we're gonna add that to the pot. I'm using one hand, one for the camera, y'all. My tripod. Now here's my flowers that I browned in the oven. So if this is not thick enough, I'll just take some of this flour, take a little bit of the broth out, add it to this and put it back in there. And you can do it that way. You don't have to add any more grease to your dish, okay? All right, I just wanted to show y'all that. It's been in the oven now for about mm, oh, 350, I think it's on. It's been in there about 35, 40 minutes. This is my little Magnolite saucepan that I got in. And all you do is just take it out and stir it. Just smell it. And then what I do sometimes, I do a lot of this and put it in a jar. All right, y'all, here's the finished gumbo. And uh, you see the meat, it didn't break all up. I wasn't gonna use those little beefy sausages, but I did, there's my, cr my crab. And I wanted to show y'all my shrimp. There's some of them. And that's my first gumbo, fall 2020. All right, y'all, have a blessed day. Much love, bye.
Bye. Bye. Bye.